We just made this six foot tall scarecrow porch leaner using a couple of fence pickets and one of our kits. And we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it or make it? So do we. And we have new videos each week. Fall is in the air. Nothing welcomes fall like a DIY front porch leaner, except maybe a six foot tall scarecrow front porch leaner. This is gonna be part of our giant leaner series. <laughs> yeah. So if you followed us last year, was it last year yeah, we I think created it was last year. our giant nutcracker, who is using two pickets like we do with most of our leaners, but we kind of, what do you say? I like to think outside the fence. <laughs> and so this guy has arms and a drum, and he's a pretty big, pretty much larger than life. He is taller than I am yeah, and than wider than me. And so this year for our fall leaner, we wanted to make one part of the giant series, but in a fall version. So we're gonna make our own fall scarecrow porch leaner. This guy's going to have arms that go out like this. He's going to have some straw on there and he's going to have a, it's gonna look realistic. a giant scarecrow hat. He's going to be so cute. You guys are going to love this new porch leaner that we've created for you. Step one, we're going to gather all of our supplies. We needed two of these six foot tall fence pickets. These are the dog eared kind. This is going to be for his body and his legs. And these are pressure treated pickets, so they're going to be perfect for outdoors. You want this smooth version. There, you'll find two types at your local home improvement store. One of them is really rough and grainy, but this is the premium picket and it's a little bit smoother. So it's going to be best for this project. We like these better anyway. <laughs> and these are, oh, sorry. And these are three fifty dollars each, so less than $7 for two of these. So we're going to need two of these Gothic pickets. They're about 42 inches long. They're that classic picket look. This is going to be for his braces or the backer pieces. One's going to be for the arms, the other one's going to be for just to keep his feet together. And these are also pressure treated and these were about $2.10 each. So for less than $11, you've got the whole base to your scarecrow. We're also going to use our new scarecrow kit here. So you can see you've got all these little pieces here all and they're held into their little frames. Uh, you can get this quarter inch MDF. Yes, you can get this in our store at kngmega.com. Just search for Scarecrow Picket Leaner. We're also going to need some wood glue to glue it all together. And some Starbond glue to glue all the MDF together. Yeah, wood glue is going to be MDF to pickets. Starbond is MDF to MDF. We're also going to add as a little bit of an accent, just give it some flair. We're going to add some of this raffia on there for his cuffs and his hair. So I picked this up at Michael's and I think this was three or four dollars. It was pretty cheap. So is that our fake hay? That's your fake hay. What's the difference between hay and straw? Leave me a comment down below if you know the difference between hay and straw. And raffia. This is technically and raffia. raffia. I, I don't guess, know. yeah. Somebody will let you know down below, I'm sure. And then of course, we're gonna use our Foxy Hughes paints to do the painting of the whole kit. Now, these are perfect for this project because they are outdoor house paints. So they are weather resistant, UV resistant. They're gonna be perfect for this kit. It'll help you weatherproof this guy so it can hit some sun, it can hit some rain. It's gonna be good to go on your front porch. He'll make it through the fall. And you can find these in our store as well, kngmakeit.com, Foxy Hughes paints. And that is it. Step two, we're gonna make all of our cuts. Well, it's just one cut. We're making one 11 inch cut out of this picket right here down at the bottom. I'm just gonna use old pocket saw, dust them off, bring them out for one cut. One cut. Now, if you do not have your own little pocket saw or miter saw, you can make this cut over at the trim section. You can use a little miter box saw or well, I don't know if they'll make the cut for you on their big saw. I mean, it's one cut. It's you can right figure on out how to make it with any type of saw. Yeah, a little miter box saw right over in the trim section. You don't even have to bring it home and cut it. You can cut it right there at cut the store. It there. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> we also cut our kit on the Eon Nova 14. But before we do, I wanted to show you a couple of tips and tricks in Lightburn. Do you ever grab your pieces out of your laser bed and get frustrated because there's a bunch of little pieces you have to gather up? Or have you ever tried to cut your projects ahead of time and paint at a later date? Using tabs and frames is a great way to grab your material and then be able to 
pick everything up in one time, and then be able to keep all your pieces together and paint at a later date. So join me over in Lightburn and I'm going to show you how to add tabs and frames. Here we are in Lightburn. We already have our file loaded and the bottom half already has a tab and a frame on it. But I thought I'd show you really quickly how to create your own frame and tabs for your pieces. And this is so that you can take them out of your laser, keep them grouped within their frames, stack them and maybe paint them later. Or for us, we use them grouped and stacked so that we can ship them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add this onto the arm pieces over here. So we're going to select both arm pieces and we're going to group them together by using control G. And then we're going to go ahead and add our frame. So offset shapes, we're going to click this icon on the left hand side and it automatically creates a little frame for us. An outward frame, round style, and then offset distance, we usually keep it at about a half inch, so 0.475 is great. Now to access your tabs, you can do that over here in the properties for your layer. So we are using the red layer here, so I'm going to double click on the red layer, and we're going to make sure that tabs is turned on. And now you can auto generate your tabs or manual generate your tabs. Auto generate your tabs gets a little crazy. It puts them in crazy places. Now you can move them around and adjust them if you want. But for us, we find it's easier just to do manual and create our own tabs placement exactly where we want them. Tab size, we leave that at default at 0 0.0197. That is fine. We usually say that the tab cut power is about 50% of your max power. So here we're using 50% power. So we're going to put our tab cut power at 25%. And that's just a rule of thumb. You can adjust that as you begin to use tabs. So if we hit OK, now I can go back over here and select our little piece here. Highlight the icon for add tabs. And you'll see that the bottom arm already has some tabs. A couple of things as I go through and create some tabs for the top arm to keep in mind. You want to be careful where you put your tab placement if you're around tight corners or tiny pieces. Tiny pieces will break if it has a tab too close to the edge. So for these pointy pieces, I'm not, I don't need to tab all of them. I really just want to make sure it stays into the frame. So I'm going to add a tab on the outside edges here, one on each side. And then I'm going to add just a couple of tabs down the side of the arm. And I'm just clicking where I want my tabs to be placed. So for the cuff here, I'm going to add two. And then for the button, I just need one little tab to hold it in. It's a tiny little piece. It's light. It only needs one tab. Now you can remove a tab. If I have an extra tab and I don't need a third tab there, I can hold the shift key and click and it will delete your tab. You can also click your and drag your tabs and move them around. And I think that's it. We're all framed out, tabbed out, ready to get this thing cut. Step three, we're going to assemble the pickets. We're going to use this brace for the bottom. We're going to put this three inches from the bottom on the back. And we're going to use this as his arms in a brace. And we're going to do this 12 inches from the top on the back. We're going to glue it and then we'll pin it together with a one and a quarter inch brad. The nail, not the guy. <laughs> find center of this picket real quick so his arms aren't all wonky 42, 42 21 21 jackpot we're gonna measure 12 inches down it's about here doesn't have to be exact I'll put some glue on this picket 
My little bottle was all dried up. I have to use this big bottle. It's big scarecrow. Big Where did glue. my little brush go? Did I leave it out there? Oh, I brought my own brush. Oh. Actually, I might not need a brush. That's a pretty good pour. <laughs> From your moonshine jug of... And here's my brush. Wood, oh, you brought your own brush. Brought my own <laughs> brush. <laughs> well, do you need a paper towel? I can help you with that. Nope. Oh. That's made out of paper. So is this wood. <laughs> All right. Hold up. There's here, move it line. down here. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? It's a scarecrow. <laughs>just in case. Do you think he needs a little... A back brace? Yeah, a back brace or will the... I don't know, we are gonna put a nice chunk of MDF right in the middle. Right, that's what I was gonna say. So Let's see what the MDF pieces look like. I think the MDF will hold. Let's, let's stand him All up. All right, look see. at his little body. Here we are. Here we are. Getting there. Yeah, look, his shoulders are like right where my shoulders are. He's a little Whoa. taller than me. Yeah, he's taller than you. <laughs> Step four, now we paint. We're gonna use some of our Foxy Hues outdoor paints to start painting the kit pieces, and then we're gonna get to the pickets. Right, the pickets are gonna have a little bit of a face color, and then we're gonna, the bottom half of the pickets are actually gonna be the same color as his bibs. So the bibs are MDF, but the bottom half are gonna be like his jeans. And of course, we're gonna be using this double cross denim for his little denim I mean, jeans. It's denim. <laughs> all, right. all right, let's pop all of our pieces out, separate them into their colors. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. That's his patch. What's this? Oh, that's so, that's so we can put flowers and stuff in his little pouch. I gave it a little frame, so. Oh, that's cute. When it's on there, we can put stuff in it. <laughs> I love it. I thought we could put like real hay or flowers or something in it. Okay. If you've never followed along with us before while we paint a kit, we are using MDF for all of our pieces. And then of course we already told you about our Foxy Hughes outdoor paints, which we apply with foam rollers and a four inch handle. We're just gonna roll everything with this roller. I have a plate. Plate me. You always wanna shake up this outdoor house paint because it does have all of those UV properties in it. So you've gotta mix everything together, get the colors mixed in, get all of the, I don't know, what is it, the little weather treatment pieces, parts, gel, additives, additives. 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 <laughs> All of our top pieces are painted, they're drying. So now we're gonna do the body and his head and his legs and everything. So the first one foot is gonna be his head. The next one foot is gonna be his shirt and then everything else is jeans. It's gonna be Mr. Blue He'll Jeans. He'll forever be in blue jeans. <laughs> so we'll call this guy Neil Diamond. <laughs> Let's call him Neil. I think that's, that's hilarious. That's it. His name is Neil now. <laughs> Step five. It's time to dress our scarecrow. We're going to put all of Neil's clothes on him. <laughs> We're going to put his face, his hat, his little stuff for his shirt, his bib for his overalls, and some, uh, some hay pieces scattered about. I think we should start with the bib or the head. I think you're gonna have to work your top down because I've gotta make sure his face fits. Let's do a little dry fit, how about that? All right, we'll dry fit him. We're just gonna paint some glue on our, the back of all of our pieces and then I'm gonna tack them down with a quarter inch brad. It's more like, like a half inch. We'll say three eighths. 
<laughs> I lost the package. I don't know what size it is. It's small. The nail, not the guy. <laughs> All right, paint oh. me up. Paint me up, lady. I don't need it up here. I think, it, yeah, down there. I don't know. Dean? No. Overboard, his name is Dean. Oh. In the original? Oh. We're gonna try to hot glue some actual hay, straw, raffia. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna hot glue it in there. Use a little spatula so you don't burn your fingers. Just gonna get it all up in this corner, right? Yep, we're gonna see. I. She's iffy. Yeah, we'll just, we'll see how this turns out. He came out great. He is definitely He's, taller than me now. He is perfect. This is exactly what I had envisioned in my head. This is exactly what I wanted to see. The kit itself is awesome. I think adding the straw pieces in, uh, and just leaving it like that with just the kit pieces would be great. But adding these little extras with the straw and then Garrett was so smart, I didn't even know you added the little pocket. So I was able to add some more little flowers into his pocket. And then I added a uh, silk sunflower up there instead of the MDF sunflower. It just takes it to another level. Yeah, he's gonna watch the top. Yeah, he's got straw <laughs> on his feet too. <laughs> We'll take you, we'll show you final shots outside. I mean, now that he has arms, we can do the whole weekend at Bernie's thing. Just like go around town. Just walk town. around with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's how we should do it. Just Nobody me, and you, and, and our meal. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys. And that is the best way to support this channel. And we are about out of time. So if you're not gonna join us for the patron after show, we will see you on Tuesday for another Test Cut Tuesday. And I haven't had a chance to balance anything in a really long time. I think I'm gonna have to get down on one knee. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, the arms are really throwing it. Yes. All right, ready? Look at how great he looks though. Yeah. I mean, oh, whoa. 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 Oh. He is, he is doing it. You can't see him, but he was doing it one-handed. <laughs> All right, Neil, let's go out front. Yeah, let's go get some pictures. All right, this is going to be a cold throw. I haven't thrown a brush in a couple of weeks. Oh, yay. So be prepared. Okay. On your toes, Cam. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Ready. Step four. Ooh. Rusty. Step four. Ooh, bad catch. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do a builder make it? So do we. And we have new videos each week. Follow us in the way. What's that? And it's the road, right? That's what it reminds now.